contributors. Um, so Nancy and Robert are both joining us today. Um, they're contributors to Open San Diego. Um, so they're gonna talk to us a little bit about what Open San Diego is. And then uh, there's actually an Angular project that they're gonna talk about um, that they're, they're looking for help with, um, which would be really cool, I think, for everyone here. So uh, without further ado, Nancy, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. You can talk about Open San Diego. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, my name is Nancy. I am a volunteer with Open San Diego. If uh, you're not familiar with Open San Diego, it is um, the brigade here of um, Code for America. If you've heard of Code for America, um, they have brigades all around the country and the one here in San Diego is called Open San Diego. Uh, we have a few projects that we're working on. The current one that we're recruiting for um, Angular developers, it's called the Voter's Voice. And uh, what we're developing is a website for our local elections here in San Diego for mayor and city council. And um, this website is going to show where the campaign funds are coming from, whether they're funded from out of state or out of the area or how much money they have, how, how much they're spending, um, things like that. Um, I did have a set of slides, but I'm not gonna show them because it um, sounds like you're all familiar with um, Code for America. Um, but if you're interested in helping us out, we meet on Tuesdays and um, I'll put a link to our um, meetup page here in the chat so you can join us. We also have a Slack channel and I'll put some links for that as well in the chat. And um, I will hand off to Robert now so he can talk a little bit about his, his experience coming in as a new volunteer. So thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. All right, yep. good. Yeah, so I'm a volunteer with the Open San Diego. I've been volunteering since June of this year. So I'm just gonna kind of go over my experience with Open San Diego and then a bit about, uh, about the project. So uh, my background, so I, um, my background is mainly in education. So I'm teaching uh, software, like design software to high school community college students. Uh, some of the software like Photoshop, uh, Illustrator kind of software and uh, CAD software. And uh, in, I studied computer science and graphic design at community college and computer science at uh, uh, SDSU. And I have an interest in technology and computers, so that's kind of my my background. My journey to uh, Open San Diego. Um, so I was looking for some uh, open source experience to put on my resume. So I started looking for uh, open source projects that, that were maybe interesting or stuff that I had, I could find. And a lot of them were maybe either too complex or they were hard to get started. So I started looking for for like local projects. So I found Open San Diego about about a year ago in, in summer of summer of 2019. However, I I found that there didn't look like there was a lot of activity on the uh, in some of their projects on GitHub. So I kind of uh, check back every now and then. And then in uh, February of this year, I attended my first uh, meetup. It was one of the uh, JavaScript meetups. It was one of, when it was in person. And that was kind of like my first time with, with a, attending a meetup. So uh, that, it was a pretty good experience. However, when I went to the, I was gonna attend another one that was right at the beginning of when uh, COVID was starting. So I kind of hesitated. Uh, so I kind of didn't attend any meetups since then or after then, uh, but then I started looking a lot of more online. So I kind of tested the water in June and I attended a couple of different meetups. Uh, C++, Open San Diego, I attended this one um, to kind of see what they were about, to kind of, kind of get an idea of uh, there's uh, something interesting to do. And when I joined the Open San Diego meetup, theirs was a little different. So I was used to using Zoom for uh, a lot of the uh, so Open uh, uh, JavaScript meetups. 
and Open San Diego is using uh, Discord. I'm not sure if you've used Discord or if you've used like voice channels. So um, I was a, it took me a little bit to get an understand of how that worked, but it was these voice channels that you connect to and then you you talk on voice. So it wasn't a bunch of, uh, I guess, like pictures like on Zoom. So it was just a little different experience. Um, so I joined the, I, I was attended a couple of different meetings. There were meeting uh, weekly and I kind of tried out a couple of different projects. And then I eventually found the uh, um, Open San Diego's Folders Voice projects. And there was, there was pretty active and there was things that needed to be done. So I started working on stuff for that. Um, I joined the GitHub repository membership. And so the first thing I did, so there was this, the, the source of the data for the website is from a, uh, so it's financial data that's being uh, used to calculate information for the candidates. So there was this uh, uh, net file that was being used and it was provided uh, Excel downloads. So one of the things I tried to do was uh, was find a kind of a, like a more efficient process. And so they uh, mentioned that there was this API, this net file. And I thought, okay, that, that looks simple. I'll just go and grab the information from the API and then do something with it. Uh, so I, I studied that and it ended up being a pretty complicated. Uh, the, the API was, it was just a lot of different pieces to the API, but I kind of stuck with it and I just kept going at it and learning more, learning more. And I eventually figured it out and I was able to get some uh, information from it using Node. Uh, and then my, the next thing I did was to try to take that information that I was downloaded and then use that, uh, save it into an S C CSV file and then take that information and then kind of make some computations from that that was needed for the, uh, for the different candidates. Um, and some of the things I had difficulty with was just like learning how to use Git and GitHub uh, prior to working on this project. I'd use Git a little bit, but I didn't really have like a really good understanding of how to use it in like a collaborative project. So I, you know, little by little, I learned a little bit more each week and got a little bit better and kind of got more proficient in, in the working with Git and GitHub. And same thing with Firebase. So the Firebase is used to host the, the website. And again, that was another thing that was kind of challenging for me was, well, how, how does this work? How do I, how do I take a website? How do I upload it? How does all the different pieces work? So that was something that, that again, just kind of uh, researching, practicing, trying things out, eventually was able to understand the kind of the basics of how it worked. Um, and then another thing that was added on there was using GitHub to deploy the website from the uh, repository. So that was another challenging thing. It took some time to, to learn about. Um, and what I do as a, uh, when I've, as a contributor, so kind of the main things I do is I write uh, JavaScript, uh, review some pull requests of other contributors, and then discuss at weekly meetings, and also use Slack to collaborate with other uh, team members, and then just kind of look for new challenges to work on. Um, and some, th some things, so this, this helped me out a lot. I, I knew kind of you know, the basics of JavaScript and maybe Node and some other technologies, but it wasn't until I actually worked on a, a, a slightly larger project or even a medium-sized project to where I was able to apply some of the skills that I knew into, some, into, into more challenging things into where I actually got more proficient on some of the skills, like, for, like Git, uh, using JavaScript, using Node and uh, testing code, a lot of these different things that were, I, it was, wasn't until I actually started applying it till I got like, more proficient at it. Um, and then the project itself. So this is, this is how the, the website looks. This is one of the candidate pages with some of the candidate information. So that information is grabbed from a state system hey, and then through several steps, it's put into we JSON files you. and then it's, we can't there's a question. It. Do you wanna show your screen? Yep, so I haven't been, uh, I forgot about that. Everything you've said so far made sense about you sharing your screen. <laughs> yeah. 
How's that? That looks great. <laughs> That's incredible. All right, well, <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So I guess, uh, um, so that's the site there. Uh, like I said, the, the data is pulled from another source and I'll go over that source. Um, so it uses, well, these kind of back up a little bit. It uses Angular uh, for the front end and it uses version seven currently and it needs to be updated to 10. So there's, that's kind of a work in progress. So that's something that would be, be uh, helpful to get additional individuals to kind of look at some of that, some of the, the issues that need to be resolve to update it. The data processing is, is uh, Python and Node are both used to process the, the CSV data and then um, put that in a form that's usable for the website. And of course it uses Git and GitHub to, uh, for source control. And the basic data flow uh, for the, the website itself is to uh, the, when GitHub is updated, it sends uh, GitHub Action, pulls that, and then sends it up to uh, Firebase Hosting. So that, that part of it has been automated. The, the data flow of the, uh, the information is from the NetFile API. That is downloaded into CSV files. And those are processed with Python and Node to produce JSON files. And those are read by the Angular front end for each, so each candidate would have their own JSON file that's being used. Um, so some of the collaboration tools we use are Slack, got a GitHub and Discord for the weekly weekly meetings on Discord and my contact information there. So I'm in uh, on the Open San Diego Slack and also on the San Diego JS Slack. Um, any questions? Can anyone use those products? Um, yeah, yeah. The, I think right now uh, there's it's they're deployed to Firebase. I'm not sure which version is deployed to publicly, but that's the idea is to make it publicly available. Yeah, I, I think they, they have a they have a site. I'm not sure, Nancy, I might have the URL, but the, there should be a URL that it's going to be available at. Yeah, I'll post that. I have a question. Um, so, uh, where is the Node.js uh, API hosted? I think you host your front end on Firebase. Um, is, uh, could you tell us where are you hosting the Node.js API? Yeah, so the, um, it's, it's sort of run as a static website. So the, the scripts that are used to Node.js, are, they're offline. So if I was going to do an update of the data, I would have my, my local setup with the, the code and I would run one of the scripts. It would go up to the API, fetch the information, download it to CSV files, and then additional scripts would run and then produce the, uh, the JSON files. So that's all done sort of locally. It's, it's in the process of moving that into a GitHub action so that GitHub can then do that action. And then probably at a later stage, that would probably move into something like an API. It, it, there'd be a server hosting the where that would then pull the data, process it, and then deliver it to the website itself. Right now, that's sort of an offline task. So each time we, if we want to update the data, we have to redeploy the website. Also, oh, you're saying, so can you go back to the step you just showed us? Um, I'm, I'm a little, yeah, over here. So, um, so this is offline, you said, and the T is, um, CSV processing, you said, is done by a Node.js API, right? And that exists offline. Is that what you're saying, like on your local machine? The, uh, so the, the net file is the, the source that the state provides. So there's a script that will, a uh, Node.js script that will access that, download the data into uh, yearly, they're like uh, for 218, 219, 220 uh, CSV files. And that's run locally. So there'd be a script that's sitting in our repository. And then you would, if you uh, fetched it, then you would have that locally and you'd run that and then that could update that. It would send it uh, CSV and another script would be run that would, or a set of scripts that produce this JSON. So the Python and Node are both used to read the CSV and do different calculations. So there's maybe like five or six calculations that are in 
the candidate JSON files that are generated from the CSV. So that's all that's run that's run uh, locally. So there's no there isn't really a server involved that, that does this half. Okay. Does, does that did I answer your question? Uh, yeah, I did. I was also looking at your GitHub. Um, so can we just join as contributors, or do we need to like go through some authority in order to be able to contribute? No, I think you, you would just probably contact one of us and we can add you in. Okay. Yeah, it, it would probably be good if you maybe if you also join this the Slacks Slack channel. But yeah, yeah if you're if you're interested in that. Slack channel. Excuse me. Um, I've already joined the Slack channel, but okay, I yeah. didn't introduce myself yet. Yeah, yeah. Just you can send either on the if you join the voters voice channel or even on the general. And just say, hey, can you add me into the GitHub? And then we can okay. do that. Okay, all right, thank you. So then just yeah. to kind of like summarize what, what you guys just said, if the, the best thing to do if someone's interested in, in contributing is to first join Slack, reach out to you, you two, um, and then um, is the best way to find issues, like will one of you say, hey, like this is a great thing for you to work on first? Or is there, um, uh, like, I think I saw like a help wanted tag in GitHub um, yeah, um, I think we have a, a label in the GitHub, like a good first issue or something like that. Yeah. And um, just join the Slack. Um, there's a voter's voice channel on Slack as well. So there's usually somebody who's able to respond in there. And we also have our meetings on Tuesday nights on Discord. Um, so that's a good time to come as well. Um, so I'm in the Open San Diego um, app Slack, uh, sorry, Slack, but I don't see any channel for um, your, uh, the voters thing that you're saying. I see events, general introductions, jobs, new members. Um, I think it's SDVV maybe? It's SD voters underscore voice. Um, I'm in the open San Diego thing, um, so SDVV. SD uh, voters. Okay, got it. Underscore voice. All right. And you, you can even, even on the, the general, if you just say, hey, I'm interested in participating, then we can you know, add you to the necessary permissions and stuff. Awesome. And we can put a link to um, the uh, opensandiego.org and, and the link to the other things that Nancy has shared um, yeah. uh, as a comment on the meetup. And then I'll also share it on Twitter just so everyone has access uh, to it. Because yeah, this is this is really cool. Um, definitely really important, especially, especially these days. We even have an election coming up. Um, so it's really cool to be able to see just like the transparency of like who's given money to the different, different candidates. And um, it sounds like a great thing for to work on to either just have as a side project or like Robert, like you were saying, like it's a, a great way to, to build up skills and, and um, add more things to your resume, especially if you're looking for a job. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. And you can also, if you're, uh, if you're thinking about a certain, like a certain issue, say, hey, this one looks interesting. I think I can do this one. If you want, you can even, you know, just mention it in the general or in the, in the, 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 the voice or the channel for that project and just say, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to look at like 20 issue 25, and then if you have any questions on that, you can we can follow up on that, and you can like you can self assign or we can assign you. Yeah, it's, it's it is helpful to do if you're available to do if you're interested in the project to to do the Tuesday meetings, and the way those usually work is it it's it's uh, there's like 10 minutes of kind of like icebreaker, and then the, the there's the different groups that are separated into. And then we just kind of go down, you know, asking each person, okay, with any any updates for uh, for what you're working on, or do you have any questions on something, or maybe are you are you working looking for maybe some additional tasks? So you know, that's kind of just kind of go through there. So it's not, yeah, it's more kind of like reviewing what what you're doing, and then if you have any questions, of course, you can definitely ask questions there. So, like for me, I, it wasn't like I knew exactly what to do right away. It took me several times to kind of learn something and then do a little bit more, then do a little bit more, a little bit more. So it was a, it was a learning process and I, uh, I feel like I benefited a lot from it. It's awesome. Yeah. 
Um, anything else from either Nancy or, or Robert or any other questions for, for either of them? And Yvonne was pointing out that there's also, um, if you're not in San Diego, uh, there's Code of America, is chapter the right word? Network? Um, they come on brigades. Brigade, okay. Uh, brigades uh, like all, all throughout. Um, so like Atlanta has one. Um, yeah, most um, city, major cities and metropolitan areas seem to have a brigade. It might be called um, uh, open such and such, or um, the one in LA is called Hack for LA, but most of them are called Code for America and then the city name. Cool, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. so there's there's a lot, maybe at least 80 or so. So even if you're, if you, if, if say a certain city isn't doing something you're interested in, you can check out other brigades and you can see what they're working on and, and you can say, okay, well, maybe, maybe they're working on something that's interesting. Or if you find one, if you're not living in San Diego and you, you're in a different city, maybe you can you know, see what they're working on in the city you're living in, see if there's something you wanna contribute to to benefit your local area. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, you want to hers is code for Atlanta. Eric looks like he found it, it's code for Utah. So that's, that's very cool. Um, definitely, like, definitely great to be able to give back to the community in some way. Um, well, awesome. Um, well you, then, I'm I, done. yeah, thank you so much. Um, Julie, I think just because we're over time, like we should skip um, hiring and next meetups. Well, you might want to just, you might want to just mention that you are hiring. That's okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm hiring senior Angular developers, uh, also .NET developers. You can check that Google doc that, that um, uh, Julie shared earlier. Um, but I don't want to take up anyone's time, but yeah, let, let me know. I work for a, a finance startup in San Diego, but we're hiring everywhere. Um, but yeah, but thank you so much. I, I know we've gone a bit over tonight, but um, I think we had such a great lineup and, and so many speakers that didn't want to cut anyone off and everyone did so great. So thank you sincerely so much, uh, Eric, Yvonne, Nancy, and Robert um, for, for coming and joining us and, and talking with us tonight. Um, thank you to, to everyone that attended. Um, we, you know, we couldn't, everyone here is a volunteer. I forgot to say that earlier. Uh, me and Julia are volunteers. Everyone that's, that's spoken tonight has volunteered their time. Um, so we really appreciate um, all the volunteers and we appreciate everyone coming because if, if we didn't have people attending it, it, you know, it wouldn't matter that we're volunteering our time because like we need, like we need everyone to, to make this work. So we, we appreciate all of you. Um, uh, the slide Julie's sharing has all the contact information for San Diego JS and Women Who Code San Diego. Um, and I, these have been recorded, so I'm going to get them on YouTube. It'll probably be a couple days. I will post a link in the meetup page and on Twitter, um, to the links to the videos. Um, I think we'll probably, we'll cut it up into at least two videos, if not three, uh, one for kind of like each main topic that we cover tonight. Um, it's easier to, easier to share and promote that way. Um, and then Julie, anything I missed that you want to cover? No, I think you covered it all. You can okay, check, cool. I, you said you can check our meetup pages for upcoming meetups, right? Yeah. Sorry. I did not say that. So thank you. I always, I always forget something and Julie knows that. <laughs> um, I guess the other thing is like, we do this the third Wednesday of every month. So if, you, if this is your first time, thank you for joining us. Please join us again. Um, we'll be remote for the foreseeable future. <laughs> Um, I just shared a link to the Google Doc again. I'm not going to post that publicly because it has some people's private information. I mean, it's just like first and last names, but just in case. Um, so please grab a link to that if you if you want it. But all the other links for like the public pages, I'll, I'll make sure that I share those out. And um, we're always looking for speakers. So if you want to speak, uh, let Julia or I know. We'd love to get you on one of the, the lineups coming up. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's it then, right? Thank great. you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. I hope everyone has a great night. Bye, everybody. Yeah, stay safe, stay healthy, go vote. Yep. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.